Hi, this is Ginger Cook, and we're going to tonight be painting in acrylics the Eiffel Tower, but with a twist. We're going to be using a technique called pointillism that was uh, first invented by a man by Sir George Surratt by in, um, around 18, late 1800s. And it, became, it was very popular for a while, but and it's a style that uh, we haven't ever done it before on our show, something close to it, but never have. So stay tuned, and I'm going to show you how to bring the Eiffel Tower that George did back in uh, 1887 and bring it up to date uh, to 2020 using pointillism and color. And the star of our show, Ginger Cook, as she Keep once going. again mesmerizes her audience with the daring do's and don'ts of painting with acrylic. Okay, back to you. Okay. <laughs> One of these days, we're going to get this intro stuff no, right, right. We'll never do that. So, so here we go. We're talking about pointillism, you guys. And um, I'm, 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 I'm on you. Do you want me to go you're down? Still me, you're still on me. Still on me, and yeah. we can point at me. But pointillism, um, it's a, uh, it's tedious, <laughs> but it can be effective. However, it requires a small brush. And a, small, a little bit good of, brush. A good brush, a little bit of patience. And uh, why don't you shoot on down, George and I'll, uh, John, and I'll show you what we're doing. Uh, uh, this was, uh, this is my version of the Eiffel Tower. Let me put next to it. This was what Mr. Surratt did back in um, the 1800s. And, this, and you see all these little dots, okay? Patience. And, and this was before anybody knew about computers or pixels, okay? So this was really the cutting edge of stuff. This was, he saw the world differently and which made it very, you know, I mean, we're going to, we're seeing it a little bit different now and in, in that I'm going to do it, show you how to layer colors, complementary colors to, to do some pizzazz and it's going to be a cool painting. But just, you've got to appreciate what, what old George Surratt did because it was ahead of its time. It was uh, innovative and different and uh, I, I think rather extraordinary. When, and I've seen some of his work in museums, and you can put your nose right up close to one of his paintings. They are very, very impressive. So I'm going to put that away. Now, for those of you who are our basic supporters um, in our Acad uh, Junior Academy, uh, we have um, th these are the, we usually release them around 7 o'clock, uh, right be about half hour before the show. These are our traceables. Here's a black and white. Here's one. Uh, there's a couple different versions of that. Here's the version of my painting, and of course we have old George's. So uh, that's that's our basic supporter um, uh, on our website, beginneracrylicartist.com. So, right? Yep. You did good this time. You got it. Beginner acrylic, beginner acrylic artist .com, yeah. Yep. So, I mean, that's what it is. And we have a surprise for you. We've had some new signups on our basic supporters, and we have a surprise for you. Uh, besides the, be able to, to have access to all the YouTube uh, traceables, um, we've also included you in our monthly photo contest where we take a photo that John and I, uh, maybe from our travels, and we, we publish that, and then we allow everybody, all our paying Academy members, whether you're a basic supporter or a senior Academy member, whatever, just to take an 8x10 canvas, do your own thing. We want to see what you would do with that painting. And then the following month, I have then done a video of how I would do it, and we'll release that tutorial. Even if you're a basic supporter, you will get that tutorial released every month there'll be a different one and what's cool about this and I, I can't say it enough is that cool about this is that it allows you to see how you interpret a photo nobody's helping you no personal art coaching with it and then I'm going to show you why I did what I did not necessarily maybe right or wrong someone else maybe even had a better idea than me and then we'll have a page and on our both websites uh, Academy and the Junior Academy websites we'll have a page of the different artists that participate in the challenge so you can kind of get an idea of what other people did and it will also be posted in our uh, Pinterest group and what's even cooler than that right and that's pretty cool is that if you participate in this and as a base we will then um, you, you uh, send your painting to us and uh, we will then email you this uh, certificate of achievement as um, for each month and so you I think we have like 10 months left in the year right so you could no, number three be nine left. 
Like well, nine, no, no, we'll have a total of 10 this year. They'll yeah. have a total of 10 certificates this year, so you want to, you know, be able to collect them all and print them out and put them in your studio, sort of a record of your accomplishments, which we think is majorly fun. And um, and it's kind of it's kind of a kudos to you, the work that you've done. Great. All right. So uh, people are going to say, how I have this on a 6x8 canvas. Here's a yellow background. This is an antique white background. Here's white, so you can see the difference between that. It's kind of an off-white. I did this one on a, a yellow background, but I personally feel that an, a lighter background might be better. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do mine on a lighter background. I'm going to show you. We're just going to just... This is basically the letter A. Can you see that? Can you see <laughs> I mean, we don't really... You know, this is pr pretty much the letter A. Uh, what we need to do is find the, the halfway point in our, um, let me just sharpen a pencil here. We're going to get right down to it. Also, we're going to have a 10-minute uh, painting at the end of this. It'll be, we'll, we'll give away another original painting, perhaps a couple of scholarships for people. So stay tuned for the contest that we have coming up. And um, John, any questions why I start to draw this in? Uh, maybe. I want to find the halfway point. So there's that's the three, right? Okay. And I'm going to come up here from the bottom, which is. Let's take a look at the old one, screen. One and there. a half, right? One and a half. Remember, do put your questions in capitals so I can scroll back through and find them, if need be. Because sometimes I get distracted doing other things. I'm not always watching the screen, so I scroll back up through the comments and look for them. Who do we have moderating tonight? I want to shout out to our oh, moderators, well, too. We have Miss Steffi. Lady Hi, Steffi. Steffi's with us. Lady Liz is with us. Hi, Liz. I tried to call Steffi today, but her line was busy. I want you to know I just gave you a quick shout out phone call. Don't feel bad. And we have Lady Judy. Hi, Judy. We talked to Judy today. Okay. Did you talk to Liz today? Didn't I talk to Liz today, but I did talk to Judy today. I talked to somebody today. I talked to my daughter today. I talked to Judy today. Oh, that's always a challenge. And I talked to my friend in California today, who's uh, going to be my uh, maid of honor on the on the wedding. On we're, the wedding. We're you still get married. Work. When are you getting married? Well, John and I are getting married. Um, oh, I'm I'm involved. Sure are. And, wow. And, and we're getting married on the um, 28th of May on a cruise ship, and we're discussing that we're hoping by by May that things have calmed down in the cruise industry. All right. Um, anyway, so let's let's just take a pencil, and just very gently just draw a straight down line down here like that. All right. Now I want to um, want to measure this from the bottom real quick. Um, I think it should have been a little wider, so it really should have been. Um, this should have come out in this one about a little bit further. It should have been three and three quarters. Stephanie so it wasn't, says her her phones were out of order, and Lady Luann has joined us this evening. Okay. Oh, hi, Luann. Luann, uh, unless you talk, I don't see your name. John, what's half of three and a quarter? What's half of three and a quarter? Uh -huh. Sounds like one and three quarters. Does that sound about right? I don't know. Well, maybe maybe this make sure I'm asking the right question. <laughs> what's half of one and what's half of three and three quarters? Half of three and three quarters is a number you can, you won't be able to find that one. Do well, it metric. Just, Do it metric. Uh, it's I, just I'm, a number. Uh, it's just a number. Do it metric. Come on. Oh come on! I'm just me. gonna guess because I can't oh. stand it. I'm gonna guess. This was three and th this is three and three quarters. What brand is your electric sharpener? Oh, I don't know. You'd have to go over and look at it. It's too far away for me to turn upside down. Um, I love it, though. It's been lasting for about four years. It's really good. It's the same one I got I'm, from I'm Mark. just going to go four inches. That way I can be safe on the inside here. Two and four. How's that? Right? We'll do that. And then we'll come in a little bit each way. How's that? Yeah. Okay. So. It's called School Smart. School Smart. Okay. I remember. I'll tell you why I bought that. There was an artist on YouTube. He does nothing but drawing. And he was saying that was his uh, you know, if there's a guy that sharpens pencils all the time, and he's a you know artist that you know teaches drawing. Forgotten who it was, but I went and saw what the he he said that was the best pencil sharpener, and I said okay, got it. So I want to come down from the top here about three inches, and uh, just put a line across here like this. Now, what you've got to appreciate is we're going to come down about that far, and then you want to do the same thing on both sides of the. It tapers out a little bit, so this tapers out, and then it comes down. It swoops down to here and to here. This is, and I think the word swoop is just the right word. See how it swoops? And then um, you find the center of this, 
come out and just do a little triangle like that in the middle. I'm just drawing this middle piece and then I've got a little piece that's coming across like this. A very simplified Eiffel Tower. Joe says your hair looks gorgeous this evening. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Um, and I want to come down here and just make this, uh, you know, half circle like that. All right, so there we go. So that's our, I mean, that's pretty simple, right, you guys? Eiffel Tower? I mean, that's, and then you've got a, um, like something that comes like this, and just as it passes the Eiffel Tower, it comes, just curves down around here like this. Now this, Paris was a lot different in those days than it is today, yes? Uh, lot, lots of lot traffic, so I'm kind of going loosely off of old George's stuff that was slightly different, again, than um, um, what I had before. So this, there really isn't a lot to this, but like I say, we have the, the traceables on our website if you're a basic supporter at Ginger Cook, um, a, no it's not, it's Beginner Acrylic Painting Club, Beginner Acrylic, Beginner Ac Acrylic Artist. BeginnerAcrylicArtist.com. <laughs> I don't know. BeginnerAcrylicArtist.com. You should put that across the screen, John. <laughs> you know, that's a basic supporter, you know, gets you the two, all the traceables that we have for the, you know, for 2020 and as we keep adding. All right. So that's. Um, and we will bring some of the more. It, it, um, plus popular a one, one, one step by step tutorial uh, a month or two. Okay. Coming up like that. All right. So this is where we're at. So. Um, what I want to do now is just to put out some paint and um, pretty pretty much as a given to white. I can be answering questions and then I'll go over the colors. How's that? Let's do that. Okay. Will you be showing video of your wedding? Only if well, you know, uh, we're just, uh, here was the thing. We're getting married on this cruise ship and they, to, get the, to get actual photos from the cruise people, I don't think it was the last day, so I don't think we could get them anyway. Because it's a four-day cruise and we're getting married on the last day, so I doubt if we, we could get any at night. So I doubt if we could get them to take any photos. And if we could have gotten them, it was like five or six hundred dollars. And we're thinking, no, we don't want to do that. So what we hope for is that uh, some of our guests, if assuming we still have a wedding uh, there, we still have some, guests. We still have guests that wanted to come. Uh, so we'll we'll just hope somebody we'll we'll hand some cameras out and hope some people take some pictures and some videos. You know, that's the best we can do. You know, and um, it, they're very nice. The cruise ships right now, because of the situation that's happening, have said um, that if somebody wanted to cancel a cruise that even they'd already paid for, um, assuming it's totally paid for, they would let you um, rebook something of the same amount or less, and then you know get the credit or something. Between now and 2021. But, uh, between you know now and next year, the end of next year. So I thought that was very generous of them on their part. Uh, so far, we have not just, we're, we're still going. Um, and uh, <laughs> we're still going, right? And uh, uh, we'll see who, who else can come. You know, that's all we can, we can do. We've, uh, let's see, what else was going I got two yellows out. That's pretty good. You want, it's really all the colors, you guys. So just pretty much. All the much. colors. Well, what are your normal colors here? Well, I'm just, don't, let me answer questions, then I'll just go over what the colors are, John. Who else has got a question here? We don't have any questions. That's why I thought I'd give you that to do. You don't have any questions? Why not? Uh, well, nobody's Surely asking Surely somebody anything. must have a question. There's no questions. Uh, well. Uh, Valerie says she's going to let her hair go gray. Kudos to me for stop coloring it. Just going to go gray. Go for it. I find it's great. Well, J John, John never colored his hair, did no. he? So no. you never colored it. God. So John's been gray since he was thirty, haven't you? I mean, he's been as white. soon as Charlie was born. Yeah, we're so, forty then. You got you hit your first child, and then you went gray, you went right? Gray. Just and happened. that was just it. You just overnight, right? Yep. The shock of having a kid. Yes. That's what it is. All right. It's just sort of funny right, when you think about it, right? Uh, I'm gonna put out this orange color. I really like this paint. I'm, I'm this acrylic paint, and this was the uh, Cad Red Light. Uh, we, we found we used that color. If you have just Cad Red, just add yellow to it to, to kind of compensate for that. And of course, we want magenta. So we just, again, we just want all the colors. 
So we've had a kind of exciting week, I think, so far, considering it's just Monday. <laughs> Wait a minute. Chris J. asked a question. I have to scroll up and see if I can find it. Okay. Don't, so. don't, don't let me see it again, Chris. Let me, let me look for it. <laughs> I'd rather look. Uh, Hopefully the feet hasn't gone off too many. Well, if you asked in the very beginning, it might be gone already. Did I put yellow? Yeah, I put yellow out. I just got... Um, Here's a napa, napa, here's red, napa crimson. That's always a good color. And uh, I hope it's in caps. And then uh, let's see. Yeah, if you put your questions in caps, we have a good chance of seeing it. Um, this is oh, a sorry, nice went color all the way too. To the top, Chris. And all I saw was your last comment was about the um, that you've seen some of the. This, this is vat orange, which is very similar. Do you see that? This is Golden's vat orange. And it's very similar to uh, the Cad Red well, who, 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 light. Where are you holding that? Here. That's better. <laughs> uh, that's, they're, they're very similar in color. That, that's slightly darker, but I think they're very similar. Sometimes, you know, reds and oranges, those, those colors can be very um, deceptive in how they, they paint. And I think we're going to use... Uh, we're going to use a very bright green, too. So we are going to go ahead and use the thalo green. Because, again, this is all about really bright colors. So go ahead and put that there, too. All right, I got a few questions now that you wanted them. Mm -hmm. Chris, your question's gone, so I ask it again. I scroll all the way back through. Uh, no, I'd like to know what size brushes you're going to be using. Small, pay attention. L really little ones, like this. We're going to use some. Um, I'm going to use uh, one of these just kind of pointed brushes. And the, this is a, uh, what, a 3 8 inch. What? Isn't that 3 8 What is that, John? That looks like 3 8 3 8 inch uh, little angle brushes. You should be using 3 8 dot. quarters. Yeah. Very, very small. And when you do a dot, you want to go straight up and down, okay? Are so, the vertical lines at the bottom reflections of the tower? No. Where's George's? Pop it over there for a second. Where's George's? Where'd George go? Pop him down there. I think they were support. No, for that's this, supporting of the bridge. That's a support for this bridge. Yeah. I think. I, is there a bridge by the Eiffel? I've never been. To I the think Eiffel this Tower. is a bridge. Well, I mean, this is a long time ago. They probably tore it down and built a freeway. You know, but <laughs> this is what it looked like then. Okay. So you know. Progress. So yeah, no, so support for the bridge. I've got one over here too. See, see, right there and there and this kind of. I just made it up. So oh, then, then, then this is going to be a good question you answer as you're going along. Uh, well, one, are you using canvas? Yes, it's a 6 by 8 canvas sheet. This is Paramount, from Paramount. They're the only ones that really make it. It's really, you can get they these when you get one. them on sale for like under $3 when you get them on sale for 10 sheets. It's a great, it's, it's much, so much better than painting on paper. Paper is just, you want to have a bad result, paint on paper. <laughs> I say that, and I say that with love to people who do it, because, you know, if it's you hard. want to take some varnish and varnish your paper first, and then, you know... You have that, a better shot. Bet. But if you're trying to do an, an oil painting technique, which is what we teach in acrylics, paper is not the way to go. Now, if you want a watercolor technique, then paper might be fine, but that's what we're doing. So, though in this case, now, now wait, that I've one, said one that... One more question. I want, you to wait, have one wait, I want to answer this, though. In this case, oh. in this case, you might get away with paper. How's that? Okay, go ahead. Because uh, of all the dots. This is one of the things you'll be answering as you're going along. How did you decide what colors to use? Well, we'll, we'll do that as we go along. We're going to start with our lightest colors first because they're, they're, you can't, if they're harder to get back and over a light color. So we're going to start with... Um, with white. Oh, Robin says many pictures of the tower show that bridge, so the bridge must still be there. All right, so we want to come next to our, uh, I'm going to just start next to here with this brush here. I'm going to, we're going to block in some colors first. Um, oh, this is the secret on this pointillism business. We're going to block in a few colors um, that we know we're going to want. How's that? Like I know I want some yellow over here. I really went for compliments uh, is what what I went for the orange the orange and the uh, orange and the yellows and the green you know these the orange and the yellows and the purples then really went for compliments and, and contrast where a uh, Surratt was just mostly in neutrals okay I think I don't want that brush for this let's get a big 
let's get a bigger brush for some of these. Um, is this going to be a lesson in pointillism tonight? It's going to be a ginger pointillism. Yeah, ginger it's a total lesson so in pointillism, but you can look at his picture and see how it's done, right, can't you? So, all right, so we know we've got a little bit of yellow over in here, right? And we want it a little bit different. Maybe over here we'll put a little, okay? And then I want to put a little bit more white with that, and I want, I want a little bit of something light under here, okay? Maybe on this side of our tower, like that. So I'm going to start. We're start by start by blocking in a few colors. But the lightest, brightest yellow is going to be uh, will certainly be um, over this light color, this light, lighter color, or over white. All right. Now we're going to get a little bit of this. Do you think a, a gold of, background would be okay under painting? I think the gold would be really pretty. That that gold that we did before yeah. with the um, that metallic gold from um, give it a little extra kick. Uh, Daniel Smith gold. This 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 gold right here uh, might be stunning. Really, that's this one stuff right here. Daniel Smith. And this is a gold gesso. So we've used that a lot. That could be very pretty too. You're absolutely right. That could be lovely. I'd have a totally different look than mine. But you know, I'm just kind of showing you a way to kind of think outside the box. So I'm going to just put a little of this orange here. And uh, uh, is anybody else seeing Chris J's question? Because I am not seeing anything ex except her comment that we're not getting her questions. So if anybody out there sees it, please rewrite it. We are not painting on paper. This is canvas for those that are just showing up. Yeah, this is canvas. All right. So we're going to come along like this and just again, what we're trying to do here is just kind of lay in some basic colors that we know we're going to want. And that just, you know, so that we're just not, we don't have, what, what do we call it, endless dots? Right. And then let's take a little bit of the orange here, that light orange color, and let's just paint in our tower. If you were going to do this much, much larger and take a little time with this, I'd tape these lines. Myself, just saying, right? Uh, here's a question. Remember when you did that test of the CAD free paints? Do you think the CAD free paints are just as vibrant as the CAD paints? Um, not. It has not proven to be so. It's close, but no cigar. Not it's, You know, you just can't. You know, you're talking about pigments, and then some people's. And this is really funny. Like for instance, this color is brighter than this one. This golden one. I'll show you. This is the golden one right here, and it's a little bit darker. Not much, but so, a little bit. Some people just get better with the you know brighter pigments. Um, I'm going to put a little red with that color down here like that. I want this redder anyway. I'm going to come in here like that, and um, just very carefully paint the tower um, red like that. And let's get some yellow on this and paint this one brighter, lighter yellow. See, it's a, you put yellow with that red and you get a totally different orange, don't you? And then this one, totally different. All right, let's just put a little of this color in here like that. Uh, there. Okay, so you're looking at that. Let's see what else we could do. I think that's, it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward but the trick is if you don't dry between applications what's going to happen is that, is that um, uh, you need to you need to dry between the applications of this painting because if you don't all the paint all your colors are going to get a little muddy all right and that and you don't want that so let's put a little bit of more white with this I'm kind of getting rid of my lines too which are going to because I used a pink chalk, it's gonna it's going to affect the color too. All right, let's just do that. So I have there. So that's Chris just asked. Ah, she did a lowercase this time. Question was about layout. I put in caps, but oh well. Ah, you type that. That I could see. Apparently, your caps aren't coming through. Well, do it lowercase, so now I can see it, Chris. I saw it. There's a little white orange here. That's a little bit of that orange color with a little white. 
All right, you can see where I'm just looking for places where I can put a color just to have it peek through, where I don't have to, you know, paint everything. Because there's a lot of dots in this, and there's a lot, of, there's a ton of layers as we get to chatting with this. There's an absolute ton of layers in this um, picture. Um, there was some. Um, Hey, we'd like to thank Andrew for the donation. The live shows make my Mondays. Thanks, guys. Oh, thanks, Andrew. Thank you very much, Andrew. He did that through the PayPal system. We do appreciate that very much. Andrew is going to be the best man at John's wedding, which I think is kind of cool. Maybe we'll make him the official videographer at the reception <laughs> or something. He can't be, though. Someone else will have to tell the picture during the wedding, though, because he's in it. He's right? in it. You know? He's a star. I don't know. Art's coming. Maybe we'll waylay him. this Art? You Art know. has a fancy camera. I know well, he, so he knows how to do camera stuff. So we can do I some of that. I don't see Art tonight, though. We got... I, I'm really excited about this. i got to tell you this. I'm not going to tell you who or what, but I've got to tell you that I saw some photographs, um, some of those breathtaking photographs on the um, Internet today that just took my breath away. They were so beautiful. And I just really wanted to paint them. And the responsible me contacted the... The responsible you, under the under the coaching of from who? You. Yes. And we contacted the um, the artist, the, 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 the photographer, photographer, right? Contacted the photographer, and um, asked if they would she would mind if we um, used her pictures. And guess what? She was delighted. Said sure. Absolutely. So Academy can. members look for some new. So paintings. I've got that's some exciting. Yeah, well, we're so exciting. And one thing about it, this we have got some of the best, best new paintings come up in the academy. Which you know, once a week the senior academy gets new artwork, and it's it's really kind of cool what we've got. Let me dry all this yellow real quick. Maybe you have something you can show people, John. I oh, need I, to do, dry I do. I do. I do. Wait. 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 Sure. Let me just put all this away. Wait. Yeah. Wait. Let me get my right window up. And yeah. that. Okay. All right, let me mute you. Wait a minute. Wait. I'm going to move my, my, bev my beverage. Yeah. Okay. You're muted. All right, let me show you this. Um, there we go. This is from a... Oh, can't see the website thingy. But this is from a new uh, member who had won a... Um, Membership on our beginner our acrylic artist.com website. Sheila, these are her first paintings that she shared with us. And we were just blown away with the quality that she's come up with right out of the shoot. Don't know her history, how much she'd painted before, but we were most impressed with these paintings and we thought we'd share them with you. Again, Sheila, a brand new member of our beginner acrylic painting artist.com. And on the boss again. And All right, we're back to me a little yeah, bit. Are back we? to you. All right, so again, we're still laying out color. Um, so thank you, Sheila, for sharing. That's great. I mean, I, and again, tonight we'll be giving away some, uh, an, we'll do another 10-minute painting at the end of the show, and we'll be giving that away to somebody. And um, also... Um, oh, wait, we got the question. Chris is wondering why subject is in the middle versus thirds. Well, this is like a portrait. Well, it's a portrait yeah, it's of a the portrait. Eiffel Tower, Chris. Yeah. And besides, we're doing Surratt's painting, and that's where he put it. <laughs> you wouldn't put the Eiffel Tower in a third. That would just look so bizarre, right? Well, you could, but it would be bizarre. See? It's, see? Sorry. So. Yeah, it's a portrait of, you know, portraits it's a portrait. typically go in the middle. Portraits typically. go in the middle. Not always. Not always. Portraits typically go in the middle. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Chris, for your diligence on getting that question to us. This it was a is good question. Thalo green and white. Because it is one that we often talk about. Somebody asking, how do you decide on your design? Uh, hours. I yeah. spend hours on this stuff. People have no idea. You don't know. You don't realize the paintings that we, um, we don't do. You know, maybe I did something I didn't like it, and we don't do it. So, uh, the design is everything. And we work on that. And, you know, this is an interesting thing. It's a question that came up the other day, and I think this is a good one to address. I probably should do a blog on it, but I think this is a very good one to address. Um, 
what is the difference between the type of art that sells well in, say, art galleries and so forth and gets published and art that wins prizes at an art show? They are two different subject matters. Totally different. So you've got to decide as an artist, are you interested in winning something at an art show? Or are you interested in selling your art? Um, or just having it where people want to hang it in their homes? And uh, we'll talk about a little bit about that because it, 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 there is there's a definitely a difference. This needs to be a little wider here. There definitely is a difference between the art that um, is sold that way. And um, uh, and the, the stuff that, that, that tends to win prizes in art shows. And I, and I think it's important to mention that because um, uh, so many people, you know, will sit there and say, oh, I don't understand how that won an art show. It's not, you know, this other painting was more photo. You see that particularly if you're entering a local art show um, contest, you know, maybe in your own community. And the person that maybe there was someone that painted a picture very realistically and some other person won and their painting wasn't particularly, uh, you know, as good. That you, you know, your idea of what you think would be good, right? Not as good. But nonetheless, uh, they won. And um, so then you're going, well, how, how come they won? You know, what is it about that painting? Why did that painting win? On, you know, when this other painting's better. And so kind of like Surratt, you know, when you're talking about winning art shows, the judges are looking for something they haven't seen before. If you... If you can, if you're in, for instance, if you're entering a professional category of professional art, you know, because then usually they make you do it if you've won a few things, right? If you're entering professional, an art category that's professional, all right, um, they figure that you should know how to draw a lemon, paint a lemon perfectly. Just down, knock a lemon out, make it look just like a lemon. Shouldn't be any, that's, there's no trick to that. So then the question that um, gets asked by the judges is, what can you show me about a lemon that I haven't thought about? What can you show me about this lemon? Not just can you paint a lemon well. And I think that that's, um, I think that that's kind of a surprise to people, where what sells in a, um, what'll sell in a, um, uh, for instance, what'll sell in a, um, uh, gallery, an art gallery, or so forth, and what publishers are looking for is what's going to go with the sofa. So the first thing that you have to know as, as an artist is what's selling. What's selling. So, so how do you find that out? Because not necessarily what's selling in the gallery, but what's selling in general. What, what, is, what is the public buying, right? That's what you have to um, kind of know. And so then the question becomes, um, I'm using this, just the corner of this brush now for some of these bigger pieces, um, the, the, but I'm going to switch over in a second. So the question becomes, you know, so what's selling? So where do you see what's selling? Well, go to a furniture store or something like a Big Bath, Bed Bath & Beyond, see what's, see what's in the prints. Um, maybe go to, say, Wayfair. Dot, dot, uh, dot com on the, on the internet and see what they're selling in the way of uh, of paintings because obviously they're selling something yeah so what are they selling and then so those chances are those are the subjects that's selling now the other thing is what colors are selling I didn't know this did you this is really this is great information while we sit here and happily do dots okay <laughs> so I'm, I'm telling because I understand that you know making all these dots is going to make you all crazy but um, so the, then the question is, so what, what's selling? Well, what's selling is uh, the color that have in colors. Did you know that for a minimum of $5,000, once a year there's a, for, to, to, to go to this thing, once a year there's a color convention in Los Angeles. And what they um, 
what they have there is um, uh, that all these manufacturers, some, some furniture and rugs and carpets and bedding and everything, they get together and they all agree on the colors for the year. So therefore, if you buy a lamp at Walmart and you buy your sheets at um, Dillard's and you go to Neiman's and buy something else, maybe a throw pillow, it all goes. And you're going, no kidding, yeah, it all goes. So, I mean, I think that that's, that it all matches. The colors all match. They all agree on the, not just the color of the year, but they agree on all this stuff. So, and that's thought about. And if you're, you know, in theory, I had a friend that went to one of those. I've never been, but I had a friend that went. And, you know, she had some input into uh, what was selling. She got to say what she thought should sell, right? Which I thought was sort of interesting. She got to, you know, at least she got to get the inside scoop on what was selling. I doubt if they really cared about her opinion. But anyway, that's what it, her company paid for her to go. And that's, um, and I thought that was, I think that's just kind of cool. Don't you guys think so? So anyway, you've got to get to the colors. Now, it's expensive to change. Um, one thing that's very expensive to do is, is change out, uh, uh, you know, the beds, the beds, bedding gets changed out, the colors, the spring and summer, but they get changed out after that every few years. So you, if you, um, um, if you're doing the, um, if you if you go say to, to to your department store and you look at the colors that they're using in bedding, chances are those are the, the colors that if you paint something in those colors, that that's what that's what's going in homes right now. And then you to figure out what the subject is, you've got to go to see what other people you know what else is you know what the big stores are buying to sell. Because um, because people are influenced by that, whether they realize it or not. Um, that, does that, don't you think that's interesting, John? I think it's fascinating. I mean, I think it is because that's something that no one ever tells you. That's that's a that's big time secret stuff here, you guys. No Good question. That gorgeous turquoise color that you've made. That was th phthalo gr green and white. Phthalo green and white. Hmm? There you go. As simple as that. Yeah. They look green and white. The other thing I've noticed, you know, on our cruise ships, I just shake my head at some of the art that they put on the walls in there. That's the stuff that wins at art shows. It just doesn't make any sense to me at all. Not the stuff they're selling to the general public, just the stuff they're hanging on the wall to decorate the ships with. Right? It's just wrong. Yeah, but that's, you know, that's the stuff, that's more of the stuff. Because, again, they're looking like Surratt. When Surratt came out with this pointillism stuff, tr trust me, people were not big fans. <laughs> Though he was ahead of his time. And he said something about the Eiffel Tower nobody else thought about. It. He had a different way of expressing um, a painting known as the Eiffel Tower. Um, which, which is interesting in itself, isn't it? Um, uh, that's what that's what I love about um, about art. That you know, there's levels of art. There's the the commercial art. More what people will buy. And here's something that you know we we don't tell people very often. We'll share this with you guys tonight. You're hanging in with us. We're going to share you a bunch of secrets on this stuff. Is that um, the average person will pay for a painting first that will go in their living room? Okay. And then after that, they might be able to cough up some money for um, a painting for the dining room or entryway. And they want something big enough that's going to go over the sofa. Okay? That's, that's, that's kind of what the, the goal is there. Okay? Something big enough to go over the sofa. And um, so then it's either two paintings or something at least 30 by 40. 16 by 20 paintings are considered amateur art. When you go to sell in an art gallery, if it's 16 by 20, you can do something smaller and maybe frame it cute, but 16 by 20 are because that's that, that canvas size is full of painting party student paint sizes. Um, you're going to be less likely 
to um, to do it in a gallery. But on the other hand, if you're selling over the internet, it's a good size to ship, and uh, people can find frames for it anywhere. So an average a customer might be perfectly happy with a 16 by 20 painting. So you really need to know your market. And who you you're need to know who you're it. selling to. Yeah. You know. Who's your target audience? Um, galleries, for the most part. Uh, can't make it just selling paintings, so they generally are frame or framing shops too. So what happens there is that they don't want to see some crummy frame you bought somewhere on the yard sale on your picture. They would rather have you do a gallery wrap canvas where the canvas is a white, big white edge where they can frame it themselves or not have a frame. Uh, because it, otherwise they want to sell the person the frame. But that they don't want to have it in their frame. And the thing of it is, is that you don't want to get suckered into um, um, buying the frame from them either to, for the privilege of hanging it in the gallery. Because that's another kind of racket, too. You don't want to get caught in that, right? So, um, so to iterate, the things that are selling most are found in the big box stores. Um... It's good, you know, good to know, right? Um, you can go to Bed Bath & Beyond, Penny's, um, uh, Wayfair, stuff like that. Not necessarily Amazon, because a lot of people can put anything up on Amazon. It could be anything, all right? See how it's sort of building up now? Not, we haven't got much going yet, but you can see how we're building up the colors. So now I'll answer some other questions. If you guys found that interesting, let me know. What do you got, John? What do I got? Let's take a look. How's Ginger's shoulder? Oh, Ginger's shoulder still hurts. But it better, feels like a little better. Yet. It's better, but it still hurts. Still what size hurts. canvas do most people like to buy? Well, this is the thing. I mean, who's your audience? Um, again, they're not going to buy anything. They're not, they can go to a, a store and buy a print for the kitchen. So unless it's unless your price point is really low, then I kind of want to pay for that. Generally speaking, there's exceptions to that. So, uh, 30 by 40 is a good size. A uh, 24 by 30, those are good sizes. Um, gallery wrap, so they can pick out their own frame. Because there's nothing like uh, saying, well. I'd buy this, but your frame doesn't go with my um, stuff. With my dog. Just, you know, or classes with the wood. or You know, I used to tell people back when uh, people were saying, I wish that matched my sofa. One time, for the fun of it, I was at this art gallery, and they said, I just wish this matched my sofa better. And I, had my, I was painting down there. I said, bring your cushions down. I'll put some flowers in there that match. But just keep in mind that after World War II and the people were getting their stolen art back from the Nazis, um, they weren't asking for their stolen sofas. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> just think about what you've asked people to do, right? Because I mean, oh, you're, just, you're a clever one. <laughs> well, they weren't. I mean, I'm not making that up. They're still, you know, 100 years later, they'll still be trying to figure out who owned what art, but nobody gives a rip who owned what sofa. But there's an awful lot of concern. I say buy the painting and then decorate around it. But everybody does it backwards. They don't do it that way, which I think is crazy. I mean, you should buy the painting and decorate around it, yes? What would be a good picture for a bedroom? Um, well, that's the thing. It changes. Changes yearly. It changes yearly. So go into, like I say, go to some furniture stores and see what people are buying because I mean, it changes all the time. If people want to be trendy, and then, so um, for instance, do you remember Rosamond? There was an artist that painted this woman, and she was very pretty. Now, why you'd want some really gorgeous woman in your bedroom? I don't know to look <laughs> up at and think, God, I wish that was me. I mean, I, I wouldn't want that. I think that's an ego killer for sure, but. Um, but that was um, that was very she was very popular. There was a time when that that work was just hugely popular. Okay, so um, uh, you know that was really popular. But you know something else. Um, you know if you if you're in a town, for instance, like if you're in a resort town, right? If you're in a resort town, they um, 
uh, probably, depending on where you are, if you're in Kenny Bunkport, probably uh, a nautical picture, stuff like that, stuff that kind of goes with the scenery. If you're in Florida, maybe something more tropical with palm trees and boats and water. You know, so, so a painting that would do really well in the Northeast might just be totally, totally you couldn't uh, decorate a doghouse with it in Florida. I don't know, not many people decorate their dog houses with art, but I'm just saying, right, you, can't, you couldn't do that. Um, <laughs> the dog would not like it. So I'm just saying, you just couldn't do it, right? But on the other hand, um, uh, you, you just, you think about these things, I mean, what people do. And uh, uh, the, it depend. It's regional. It's where you. So you got to get actually get out of the house, and go look and see what people are buying in your neck of the woods. Literally, what are people buying where you live? Yes and yes. Well, aren't florals always a favorite? Well, florals can you know work in a dining room. Stuff that goes in dining rooms are uh, still lifes, florals, that kind of stuff. But it depends. I mean the colors will depend on um, whether somebody has a traditional home. There was a store, I think it's out of business, out, it could be called the Bombay House or something like that, and it was kind of the, the, the furniture from very dark wood furniture, uh, kind of based off of maybe something that uh, some English people might have decorated around in, in India 100 years ago, that kind of look. And that was very popular for a while. I don't think it is so much anymore, but back then, I keep moving around, just looking where else I can put the green. When I have a color on my brush, I keep looking, see where else can I put it. And you guys didn't realize that this would take this long, did you? So, I mean, yeah, that's something to consider. You know, where's the... Um, and the other thing is that people don't want to... People say, well, I don't know how to char much to charge. Well, for one thing, people don't care really how long it took you. Um... Uh, your doctor went to medical school for seven years, and you can talk, take your tonsils out probably in 30 minutes, um, you know, but you're paying kind of for the medical school too, right? But on the other hand, um, if it takes him twice as long to take out tonsils as someone else that went to medical school, people don't want to pay him overtime for the fact that he's not as good as somebody else. So this idea of charging by, by the hour like you were working at a gas station and pumping gas or something and having a boss... That's um, probably, I would dissuade yourself of that idea completely. Yeah, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. But, you know, for sure, cost of materials, you got, first off, bottom line is you've got to get the money back on your materials. And even when you're giving art away to somebody who asks for it, not if you're just giving it as a present, but if somebody asks, oh, I wish I could have that painting, the nice thing to do is offer to pay for the materials. You know, that's, you know, so let me buy, at least give, you know, let me give you another $25, $30 so you can buy some more paint, you know, and keep painting. I really love what you're doing. That's a nice thing to do. I'm not saying everybody is nice, but that is the absolute one of the nicer things to do when you're, um, when somebody just, you know, like, for instance, I have my friend Liz, you know, she gives her art away. She doesn't really want to sell it. But if, I bet if somebody came and, you know, maybe she wouldn't ask for that. But I, I just tell people, even if you don't want to sell it, it it's not wrong to, uh, you know, say, yeah, I'd love to give it to you, um, you know, if you feel like donating to the cause of the, um, of the artistic adventure here, we'd appreciate it. And that's the same thing because we appreciate people that, um, you know, are, are, you know, at least have signed up for our basic uh, supporter Um um, on our website, basic supporters, four ninety five a month, and we give back to that. But I mean, I think that's a nice thing to do. But even so, we had one lady who very kindly just went to our uh, website, uh, gingercooklive dot gallery, and into our PayPal thing and just pledged a dollar a month. That's nice. If everybody did that, if you had, you know, that would be if you just did that to the different YouTube artists that you liked, that would be a nice thing. Don't you think, John? Absolutely, we've done that. We've done that, too. I've done that for people. I mean, just something, somebody, I appreciate the time and effort they took into it. One lady wrote us this big, long letter twice and thought it would be just swell if we added all this text to our videos so she and her friends could watch it when they all came over to watch. And my suggestion, to, you know, I mean, I don't know who she thinks has the time to do that. We're already giving you a free video. So why, you know what I mean? So, I mean, 
I hope nobody missed the word free here, right? And so now she wants somebody to come translate it, right? And have text and all kinds of stuff you can have. Well, what else did she want, John? It was really extraordinary, I thought. She wanted a lot of stuff, right? Yeah. Huh? Oh, yeah. It was uh, quite extensive. It was extensive. But you know what? If you, if you, if you, did you know that we have videos that you can buy and just stop the video and replay it? But I'll tell you a secret. You can do that with YouTube, too. You could just stop the video and then replay what somebody said. You don't even have to buy it. You know, you don't have to have it written out for you. You could just stop the video, right? And, well, and YouTube does do its best to do... Um, closed caption, too. Closed you, captioning. With, and yeah. sometimes it gets a little weird when there's two people talking and YouTube doesn't know one's interrupting the other one. Yeah, now, I'm not trying to be flippant about this, but I just think it's interesting. You know? Do you know anything about pointillism? And can you tell us more about the author? Oh well, I would suggest you look up George Surratt on um, Wikipedia. On Wikipedia, uh, because he he was marvelous. He was a marvelous, and, and again ahead of his time. And um, but pointillism didn't really catch on, though, did it? Big time? No, it didn't catch on. It's too time consuming. Well, um, but you know, I off I I say this. Um, I can remember back in college, a couple of boys in our art class that loved sitting there with pens and inks and making little dots. That just, you know, for some people, this is just mesmerizing. You know what I mean? It's almost like therapy. You know? It's just, and, and it, it's, it's interesting because it doesn't work until you have a lot of, you have to color. See, you I gotta mean, keep going back. You have to keep going around the whole painting. Yeah, you're going around the whole painting. I mean, absolutely. You're going around the whole painting. And, um, and getting these colors, and I think I'm leaving enough drawing time where, see, now I'm coming back over here with this blue, and you just keep layering, but you got do have to kind of dry in between layers, which is kind of fun, right? We had you a do donation that. come in through the PayPal system from a person whose name I will just totally mutilate. Oh, thank you very much. We really appreciate <laughs> Costa, that. Costa, and I'm Costa. I'm going to go with Costa. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you we very appreciate much. It. Very much. We appreciate it. Uh, the English language, my second language. I don't know what my first one is. Well, I me mean, neither, John, sometimes. It's, it's okay. <laughs> well, um, it's interesting. All the different, um, so many different ways to paint and so many, just like different handwriting, don't you? You know, there's a big difference between, say, calligraphy and just regular longhand, yeah? But did you know in the 1800s and 1700s, and every kid in the world learned calligraphy? And calligraphy really is a form of drawing. Calligraphy is that kind of fancy. And then, you know how, like in the old days, when they'd start a chapter, well, I'm talking like 100 years ago or more, a chapter of a book, they'd have this, maybe the first letter would be all fancy with a bunch of stuff around it. They, there's a word for that, and it's escaping me right now, but you know, they used to do that, okay? And uh, every kids could do that, too. They just, that was a skill that people learned. Which I, I think is kind of neat when you think about it. I mean, people learned how to do those things. And uh, the kids did. And, and then the, and the girls had to embroider it, too, besides that. They, they learned embroidery and all kinds of stuff in school. <laughs> that uh, Well, we learned cooking and things in class. I mean, they yeah, had you different guys had to learn cooking. We had work, woodworking and metal shop. I wanted to take cooking. Did you? Well, I took metal shop. Sorry. Yeah, we had metal shop. Metal I took shop metal and shop. I, I, and I was the first girl that ever did it. This was before women's live and everything. I just saw all the boys came home. With all the cool on, stuff. With all the cool stuff on the bus. And I'm going, okay, that's cool. I don't really want a gear shift knob. But, you know, that could be uh, something else. And let's see. Let's see. What do you got there? Okay, you made that. I could make that. But I'd make it something else, right, kind of thing. Hey, here's a question for you, if I can sure. bring you back. How do you know how much paint you use on a painting so you'll know how much to charge? <laughs> well, I think that generally speaking, um, you put some out on the tube, whether you use it on the painting or not, I put it out, right? So if, if I put out like a tube of paint, is say, say this tube of paint is like $10, right? And I put out what? Um, a squeeze. A squeeze of it, which is maybe $10. Least a, you probably put a buck. I'd say a buck, buck a color. Buck a at color. Least a buck at least a buck a color. Yeah. 
at least a buck of I mean, color. That would be an easy way to do that. So you at least have that, then your canvas, and then you're pretty good to go. And you, you, you've got that. So you've got some basic stuff, right? And then you can go, you know, because um, most people, most artists, you know, that paint, um, do it because they love it. It's nice that someone wants to buy something, but they really do it because they love it. Yeah? Okay. I mean, that's just the way it is. They just, you know, love painting and, and want to do more of it, you know? Um, so uh, it's nice if somebody wants to buy it. And as you get in more demand, more people, you know what I mean? If you start, you start low and prices. you can't keep up with it, then you charge more. You know, that's kind of the way to do people it. People are seeing a face on your painting currently, the way you've got your dots. Let me go to the straight overhead shot. Really? Do I? Where, which are the right or the left side of the uh, tower? Oh, I'm thinking it's on the right side of the tower, the green hair and the yellow face and the two eyes. I kind of, I, that's oh, here? I see right it. here? Yeah. Yeah, maybe so, huh? Hey, you never know. Well, some years ago I was doing a class on uh, clouds and skies. And this one lady was, you know, angels were totally her thing, okay? And um, got a little magenta going here, too. we got to start changing colors a bit. And um, she had, she just kept thinking about angels when she was really just trying to paint clouds. But she was thinking about angels, and you could see the angels in her clouds. I could see them. It was just way cool. Is Ginger going to be doing acrylic April with cinnamon? Uh, Ginger is not going to do acrylic April with cinnamon. Um, J J John and Ginger are scheduled. We don't know if we're still going. We've got the wedding in May, and we're scheduled to go to New Zealand and Australia in April. And, um, in April on the in, way to or, Florida. On the way to Florida. You know? So we uh, are not doing acrylic April. Um, also, we, we put out so many videos... Uh, for our academy members that we just probably won't do that on YouTube. But we will do the challenges um, every month. We're going to be doing those. Yeah, we've got different things we're doing in our academies instead. Yeah, we're just uh, we're focusing on our academy, and we so appreciate the, the members that um, participate in the academy. So we're Well, here's a question. How much time should I spend painting as an extreme beginner to start building my skills? Um, depends on you, because it would be different for everybody. You can see that, right? It would be different. But I would say um, start small. Don't try to do a 16 by 20 canvas. Keep the small. Keep it 8 by 10 and small, and try to you know follow tutorials so that you're not trying to invent the wheel. You wouldn't just take up cooking, go to the grocery store, and buy miscellaneous things that look interesting with bright colors, and and then throw them all in a pot and stop cooking and wondering why you weren't learning to cook. Yeah? But that's how a lot of people approach painting. They just go to the store, buy a bunch of canvases and painting and brushes and all of those different colors, and then they happily start painting. No clue what they're going to paint. It doesn't come out. They decide they have no knack for it. That brings up another question. I've been painting for some time, and my paintings still look like a kindergartner, very juvenile. What do I need to do? Take lessons, go get the academy feedback, go to the art academy that we have, and, and follow the tutorials. The personal course. art coaching, I mean, some of the work that we've seen from the beginning days from these people and what they're producing now. Oh, it's extraordinary. Is, you know, some of these people are just putting out museum quality art. Oh, yeah, and, and you can see it. You can see it, right? From where they started with us a year ago, I mean, it's just. Yeah, amazing. because if somebody can sit there and show you how to fix it. And people say, well, you live in Texas. How can you show me how to fix anything? Uh, this is really funny because I've got a good neighbor, a uh, good friend, <laughs> who takes art lessons Are you from me. Her under the bus? Good, I'm going to throw her under the bus. I she, knew it. She, I'm sorry, Lorraine. <laughs> this is so stupid. You're going under the bus. Um, just, she can't watch a YouTube video because there's too much chatter going on. She can't stand it, right? So she used to pay me huge amounts of money to come to her house every day and stand, chat with her about the kids and the grandkids and occasionally mention something she should do to her painting to fix it, right? As she painted. It was kind of good money for me, just, just visiting with somebody I really quite liked. And um, we talked, and then she'd paint, right? So she, and she did this for like three years. No kidding, right? And then 
uh, we, we got too busy to be able to do that. We just, just didn't have time anymore to do that. And I said, okay, join the Art Academy. Send me your art. And then um, uh, just please send me, send me your art. And then we'll... Um, uh, and then, and then I will do do a, a, a what we call a video, um, or personal art coaching through a video and a painting program where I take your photo into the computer and then I copy it onto a nut, right next to it. And then I what I'm doing now here I do with the computer and a painting program and show you how to fix it and, and why you need to fix it. I mean it's like or maybe it's just a few years, but anyway. But and and this is something and. Um, she was not willing to learn how to uh, to send in a painting. Yeah, it just seemed problematic easy. to her, right? So she says, I, and I don't want to do, I only want to paint things with bright colors. I don't want to paint, um, I don't want to paint a little still lifes and things. So, so she comes over to see me. Uh, the other day, she says, I need to see you. I said, sure, come on over, right? <laughs> come be friends, right? So it's come on over. And this is fine. This is fair. She comes over and she goes, I need you to fix this painting. I need to know what to do with this painting. I've been working on this for four months. I'm looking at this painting going, four months? Seriously? <laughs> and she goes, yeah, because I can't, I've got everything, but I don't know where shadows go. Well, if you'd bothered to take, you know, for a while, because she did join the academy, she just wouldn't do any lessons. If you <laughs> bothered to look, you know how you play scales on the piano? So that you over know where the over. notes are? That's what a lot of these paintings are. Not because you just had a dying idea to paint a penguin or an apple. It's because you're <laughs> learning the skills. to make, You can't, I'm sorry, I only want to, I only want to play Chopin. I don't want to do this other stuff. It doesn't work like that, you guys. It just doesn't. So um, anyway, you got to learn the basics. You have to learn the basics. If you don't, you know, I, I mean, when you use a, um, and again, I keep telling people, don't make stuff up. If you don't know where the shadows go, try getting a reference painting, a photo that shows you where the shadows go. Okay. Um, I mean, it's okay if you don't know, uh, though you should know. But it's okay if you don't know. But um, anyway, um, and I even gave her, a, told her to get this book on design, painting design, which she didn't want to read either. She just, she <laughs> wants this just magically to happen. She wants to put her head down at night and be Picasso in the morning. Yeah, yeah. And I say this, you know, and I'm saying this because, um, uh, you, you know, we're, we're, we're going back to some private art lessons. Um, we're going back to some private art lessons, and I'm going to hit home doing the work because all the private art lessons in the world aren't going to help you if you don't do the work of the still lifes and all the things, the blending, the figuring out how to do this. If you want to get better, you've got to... Um, got to put in the time. You can't do calculus until you can divide and do math. I mean, you know, they don't start in kindergarten with trigonometry. Why and people that? people want to start with portraits too. I just want to paint portraits. Well, that's nice. <laughs> I want to be a rocket scientist too. I think I just like a degree in medicine, but I don't feel like spending eight years in medical school either. <laughs> can't you just give me? What can't you give me a class course? Maybe just implant it in my brain. I'm sorry. Am I raving? I'm raving. Are you on your soapbox tonight, lady? I am because I just because people sit there and say, "Well, I don't know how." So is it? But the good news is, it's not a talent based. Uh. It's not a talent based hobby. It's a skill based hobby. And that comes with time. And how much time? Um, Alicia Hugh, one of our students uh, from China, she took. Uh, she was in the academy for about nine months. Did all the basic tutorials. Said she what painted should I? Everything. She painted everything. When she would send it in for personal art coaching, I would tell her what to fix. She would then fix it, send it back. I'd say that's great. Fix this. She'd fix that. How about changing this? This is why she did that. Now she's. Um, out of all the millions of people that live in China, she lives in Macau. She was invited, her as the only artist in Macau, to be part of a national art show later. In China. In China. That's huge. That's just huge. Because they only pick one from each province. Yeah, they only pick one from each province, and they picked her. I'm telling you what, and it's, you know, it's huge. And, um, uh, I mean, she's, you know, did she have some natural gifts? Oh, sure. She did, right? Also, she had the advantage, and I say this, of, um, 
of learning to write. She knew probably, you know, being Chinese, she knew how to write it. And um, it, when, why is that important? Well, it's important because of all the different shapes. If you speak Arabic or uh, Chinese and you can write in those languages, there's an awful lot of drawing with those letters. You know, just normally, just the, just the drawing, Chinese, Jap Japanese, uh, Arabic, those kind, of, those kind of letters require a lot of drawing, yes? So, um, see how this is going on here? Pretty good, isn't it? It's coming along when we added the purple. One dot at a time. So, I guess the upside is, is if you want to learn to paint, you're going to have to suck it up and learn how to blend, maybe paint an apple, maybe paint this. And um, um, there are books out there on all kinds of things you can learn, not just on the internet, but all kinds of things. Take some time and, um, you know, look at some of those, right? We're still adding now. I'm going back to some yellow in here. Okay, and look at some of those. Because um, uh, that's, um, that's how you're going to get better. And trust me, we never quit studying either. You just don't get to a point and say, well, now I know it, right? There's always more to learn. There's always more to study. Um, that's one of the secrets, too, is you just don't stop. I, I find that women, this sounds very prejudicial, but I find that women are more likely to keep studying a subject. Oh, I don't agree with that. You don't think so? Well, you do. John is always looking stuff up. He's always he does. Uh, for, he's a professional photographer, and he's constantly watching videos on YouTube on, from other photographers. And um, I mean, you you can do that. Always but, learn, even to watch other artists. You learn something different. Absolutely. You know, when Cinnamon was in college, junior college, they were going to cancel her art class because um, uh, there wasn't enough people that signed up for it in, you know, colleges, and, and they, somebody had to sign up. And because it was a junior college and it was close to our neighborhood, we were, um, we were part in the chain where I could go. I got some of my friends. We needed, like, four more people to fill the class so she could have the art class, okay? And um, I got four of my friends, and we went up there as adults and kind of monitored the class and took the class, right? And you know what I learned in that class that I didn't know how to do? And I was a professional artist at the time, and it was very hard to just zip it up and not say anything, <laughs> right? Because when the teacher said the weirdest things, I'm going, huh, okay, I'm paying you, I'll just shut up, right? But I learned how to stretch a canvas. I didn't know how to do that. I'd never learned, right? You just went to the store and bought it. And I learned what artist tape was, had no idea. I'm telling you, you can learn something. Somebody's been painting for a long time. Trust me, they're going to have some techniques um, that you don't have. I was watching a channel one time on uh, YouTube, and um, uh, let's see, I think we need to go back with some blues again, maybe some pretty greens, blues and greens. Um, I was re watching a really cool, uh, uh, you know, it was, a, it was an all Spanish channel on um, YouTube, and the guy was recommending uh, how to wash your brushes. Now, obviously, from where he was filming, you know, and somewhere in South America is where he was filming, right? Um, he didn't have access to the, the soaps that we use um, easily in the, um, in the States. But he had this soap that you could buy for a buck, big bar of soap at, uh, for a dollar, um, that uh, didn't have the conditioners in it, but uh, I could buy it at Walmart for a dollar. And it really did clean your brushes. And um, I was another acrylic, uh, another artist on, on YouTube that had a, um, uh, he painted china roses, the, the way you think of old teacups and stuff, you know, like the, uh, the kind of fine china type of art, you know, that old fashioned, you know, tea roses and stuff. And he would use canvas board and, um, uh, he found that if he took um, modeling paste, which I think I had some somewhere around here, somewhere I could show you, took modeling paste and covered the board first with modeling paste and then spread it like, say, peanut butter or butter on toast and, um, and then lightly sanded it and went after it dried. He covers canvas boards. And that took canvas, to, to, to my opinion, canvas board is some of the most difficult stuff that, probably worse than paper for me to paint on it. You can't stand the surface. That turned into something quite marvelous. 
So, I mean, people have some great ideas, and maybe, um, and so they, maybe they're teaching you from another country. I, I'm, I'm saying you can learn, you, just what you said, John, you can learn stuff from all kinds of people. John, are you painting? No. I get to do the backgrounds. I get to do the underpaintings. John is working till 3 in the morning every night on the website. And, you know, we were going to release that. Let me just take a second and show you this. This week's for the, you know, in our Academy of Fine Art, every, every week we release something from a beginner to an advanced lesson. Every week we vary it up the subject, okay? So you'll get every month we have like four to five releases. And this is... Um, this was supposed to be last th week. This was supposed to be last week. This is our... It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Promise. Um, this, this is the, this, if you zoom in on this cup, you see it's okay, all cracked. Don't, don't move it around on me. It's, it's it. all cracked. And this particular, um, uh, you know, and I show you uh, uh, what mediums you need to be able to make this effect and how to do it. And that's in one of our videos. And I think this is, this is a really nice kind of, I think, a fun kitchen painting. This is a small kitchen painting. And this is something somebody might buy and say hang in their kitchen because it's little, right? Uh, probably wouldn't make a good 30 by 40 painting. Make sense? No, that would not. You know, so you've got to decide. Sometimes something makes some better subjects, small. Some subjects deserve to go big. Yeah, it deserves to go big. And conversely, um, here's a painting. Uh, Jennifer Chase uh, found this uh, artist that I had never heard of in the 1800s. And, um, I love that one. And I love this, these, these flowers in this uh, little chalet. And again, this painting, even though this is like 9 by 12, would be fabulous 30 by 40. Yeah. But that's the difference. This would be fabulous. And that's a lesson that's coming up really soon in the Academy, too. I think in, uh, I think we have that in April, right? Hey, ladies, go ahead and put a link out. Yeah, they're just trying to put the link out. Sorry. So, so. Um, you might have to put in the HTTP in front of that link. I couldn't do it from my um, iPad. Sorry. Sorry. No, no, it's okay. So, I mean, when you talk about what, what people are painting, um, so what, what people are painting, what's trending, right? Oh, here's the thing. Here's the what age group are you painting for? Oh, that's a big one, too. This is huge. The sad thing and the good thing is, is that people tend to buy the art from artists in their age group. Maybe there's, you resonate with the subjects for some reason. But um, a good example of this was uh, years ago I was in this gallery in the mall and Cinnamon uh, also was in. And she had done, she was in going to college at the time. And she had this really cool painting. I really quite liked it. It was, uh, I've forgotten what it was. But um, uh, anyhow, she, um, uh, this rock musician came in. He used to paint. Uh, uh, play for uh, Easy Top. He was a backup drummer for Easy Top. He's an artist himself. And he came in with his girlfriend into the art gallery and he was looking around and he wanted to, and she was like about the same age as Cinnamon, I think. And he wanted to buy, he says, I'll buy you anything. What do you want in here? He had a lot of money. He says, what do you want to buy? Buy anything in here. And he picked Cinnamon's painting. And, and it was totally different than all the other stuff that was in there because there was a lot of different artists, right? But, but she, that was her contemporary. Does that make sense? And as Cinnamon has gotten older, her contemporaries still follow her. Does that make sense? But when you're younger, like when you're in your 20s, the problem is that the people your age don't have any money <laughs> just to, you know, to buy anything, right? Just, but on the other hand, um, so that there's, there's our art for the generation. And then there's then there's art for the office, right? I mean, um, there's art that someone might hang in an office, and uh, there's art that somebody might hang in a hospital that they couldn't send. For instance, if you're in a hospital, they don't generally want anything with red in it. No surprise there. Yes. I don't know. There's a there's a real. We could write a whole book on the paintings of that you need for. Um, uh, this, you know, what what you would get for um, uh, art. Sorry, John, I'm d digressing here. Do you see how long it, I mean, you can see where I'm just sort of building up the colors. Can you see that, keeping the yellows? I mean, I'm keeping, I think I'm keeping the colors fairly 
constant, don't you think? I think you're doing a good job. You know, I'm trying to sort of keep them fairly constant and just keep dotting and layering. This is really where you layer. Do you know how many people did pointillism? I don't. I don't. Um, I know for since Surratt did, there was a couple other guys. And we did something. There's a vase that we did um, on, um, on YouTube, a really cool vase. And it was sort of like that. But the brush strokes were not little dots, but they were kind of at an angle, but the same idea. And that one, do you have that one with the radishes, John? That we're leaving for the Academy, oh, the, the, the I radishes? I where I put that. Um, if you've got that one, um, that was kind of a cool one, too. Um, this one, that did kind of, it wasn't real pointillism, though, was it? Well, but it wasn't pointillism, but it was a different kind of brush stroke, which was interesting to me. It wasn't really pointillism, per se, go. but it was definitely... Um, a different kind of brush stroke. Does that make sense? Makes sense to me. Yeah, so I think you've got this take one. take these away. Did you show that? I haven't showed the baseball yet. Okay. No, have you shown this? Yeah. You did? Yeah. I so at the beginning, that. I can show it again. I should, when, when John gets back, he'll back up the camera and we'll... You mean I can't be this. in two places at once? He'll back up the camera. Back up the camera. Get the right controller. There, you see, I keep adding a few little colors to, to our... Um, Okay. Tower, yeah. All right. So this one right here, can you zoom in on the, on the? This is an academy still life, that's coming up, in their, our senior academy. And if you zoom in on this part right here, this particular artist painted everything at a little like I'm doing with dots, but everything at a little tiny angle just on the teapot. Yes. Yep. I mean, I think that's sort of interesting. I mean, the, the, we all have um, different handwriting. We all have different ways of seeing the world. That's why I love going back and getting these um, these artists from before because we all we can learn so much from them. Don't you think so, John? Absolutely. Can learn so much from them. So um, I'm going back to my yellow now and white. Now I notice that I've totally used up all the white, and so I'll put it. Uh, this might be a painting where you might want two things of white um, uh, because uh, you want white for the green or the, the blue colors and white for the oranges and the yellows. I'm going to brighten this back up again. Yeah, let me get the water off the brush because I've been it. Uh, so. If you want to make changes to one of my painting months later, do I need to sand it and remove and prep it and varnish it? No, it's acrylic Are paint. Are you going to paint over it? or? No, you don't need to. Yeah, you just keep painting on it. Yeah. But, you know, I tell you what. Here's, here's why I'd advise against that. Can I tell you why? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, because um, if, if you took, t say, two months to do a painting, the person you were yesterday and the mood you were is not the person you are today and not the person you are in two months. So there'll always be changes you could make. I think at some point you've got to give yourself a time limit on painting it. F feel like you've got it finished. Maybe look at it a couple days later. But I wouldn't go back a year later and change it because you're a better artist in a year than you were last year. So of course you want to change it. Paint another one. You want um, to keep that part of your history. Yeah. And you I want to just, know the path you've taken. Yeah, so I would go back and change it. But even after you, if you use a liquid, Liquitex medium and varnish, um, you can um, you can varnish and paint and varnish and paint because it's polymer. You can varnish and paint. And sometimes, here's a secret. Oh, don't you love the secrets? People really got it. <laughs> now, don't tell anybody. Hey, here's a good secret for you. Um, I'm just adding some light dots into here now, over here too. Um, you can, um, suppose you were doing, say, a clipper ship. I mean, something with the tiny little lines and all the sails and something extraordinarily detailed, and you're having an area of the painting that's not working well for you. You can take a, a like, varnish, and uh, like a Liquitex uh, medium and varnish, and um, paint over that section and dry it and come back, and it will smooth it out like glass. Where you could get some detail with it. So that's people, cool. Yeah. So you know something got real rough and you couldn't do it. Speaking of the copper pot that you just showed. Yes. If 
if a person was left-handed, would the brush strokes go in a different direction? Um, well... They shouldn't. They shouldn't. Because the, you just, well, you're going to have to paint differently than... They shouldn't, because here I'm left-handed. I'd still probably do them this way. Um, this brush stroke has a meaning to the painting. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the, we, we, that's another subject, but we have that. Yeah, brush strokes definitely have a meaning to they the painting. They have a life. Yeah, they do. They absolutely do. You're so right. They absolutely do. So. Okay, I've got a few of those here. That's looking pretty good. Almost done with this, I think. Um, it's got a little bit more to dry, but you get the kind of the idea of how you'd um, Have you know, draw it in and, and draw it in and paint it. Yeah. Let's try a little bit of this magenta color. It certainly is a lot longer to paint this than your normal style. Oh, it is. No question about it. It is. Absolutely. All right. Here's a question for you. I have a picture that I finished and varnished. How do I make see-through white and red stripes? I'm just reading them. Okay, so let me understand the question. I've got my paintings already finished. I have a pick that I finished and varnished. How I've... do I make see-through white and red stripes? Be well, I'm you'd, you'd, have to, it, right? you'd have to you'd have to learn about glazing. What you're talking about is glazing. Uh, probably mixing white and glazing. So you'd probably do the um, you'd probably do the uh, mixing white stripes, which will give you kind of a white film, and then you would uh, glaze over the ones you wanted red. Yeah, it's. Is that what you I think? I guess we really have to think what your what what's the end result you're trying to get. You know, but I mean, you know, glazing is um, can be very effective. Here's a question. I'm planning on joining your art academy, like I said, and, and I'm extremely beginner. Which membership would you recommend to me, and what would be the benefits? Well, Meaning, should I join the Junior Academy and paint what you have, or should I go whole hog into the Senior Academy with the personal art coaching? A lot of it depends on your budget. Um, uh, we, give a senior, we give a senior discount on the Senior Academy. Um, the Junior Academy is just sixteen ninety five a month flat rate, you know, and there's over 50 paintings on it, and you just can paint what's there, but we do have in the Junior Academy, we have your very back-to-basic lessons, and then we tell you, what next to paint, suggested videos, and if you see a painting you like, we suggest other videos you might want to have before you try that one. But the, but the Senior Academy has all the videos that the Junior Academy does. And the Senior Academy artists are, have access to both, both academies. They can use both. Well, we just did the Junior Academy because there was a price point where people um, felt like they just wanted to, you know, it made enough of a difference to them that they wanted that. We said, all right, we'll try it and see what we do. So, um, so from that standpoint, uh, you know, there's, there are those benefits, yes. And it depends then, on how fast you want to progress. Again, it's, it's, a, it's a budget thing, but if you do the personal art coaching, you will find that you will... Get, get, get further faster. But you've got to kind of, you know, you can send stuff in for personal art coaching, um, and then... And we try, as your art coach, we tell you, it's just not like a grade in school, right? I mean, I'm on your side. I want you to win. I might, um, I had uh, some, you know, we did a, a, a challenge for, a, a, in February, we did a challenge for, first time we ever did that, uh, for some of our, our more advanced members. And um, um, I think I got something back from one lady. She says, that's it. I'm, that's all I want to do. And it just happened to be okay, good enough to you know win the certificate for the challenge. But when I suggest somebody do something, I don't suggest it unless I think they can do it. And if you know, but there's no, I mean, you know, you 
you don't have to, but you know, if the more you send back and, and try it, the worst can happen is that, you know, uh, you don't want to do it, which is okay too. I don't care. It's fine. It's your okay. painting. It's your painting. It's absolutely your painting. All right, so you can see what we really. Oh, I here think, we go. It's a flag behind the eagle on black. And she wants to adjust the stripes. I still don't get it. Oh, she wants to put the American flag behind it, the stripes behind the eagle. I oh, think behind I would, the eagle. I would use mixing white and then glaze over the red stripes. That's how so you're kind of pushing them back. Well, I mean it's dry, right? Right. So let me just uh, show. Let me just show her. Would you want to? Do you want to see how you do that? I'll show you. Let's. I think we're about done with this. Let me find a. a here. What are you doing? I don't know. I don't know. What color? Ask her what color her background is. Already. What color is your background? Yeah, like she's going to respond like in the next 20 minutes. Yeah. Let me see if I can tell. Yeah, what color is the background? Um, John, a flag behind the eagle I did on black. So I the eagle's on black. All right, so this purple is the closest I've got to black. All we right? don't use black. So, because we don't have black. But this purple is the same idea, right? So you, you've got an eagle and you want to do some wavy stripes, right? Um, so then I would use like... Um, like something like uh, uh, zinc white, which is or mixing white, which is a transparent white, and I would use a, 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 a bright brush so that I got even stripes. And let's just say I wanted to do this. Let's just say something like that, right? I'm, I'm thinking you're thinking this, right? Now, if I if it the flag is red and white stripes, yes. Right. So, um, what you would do is let this dry, and then maybe glaze over that with red, and then when that was dry, come back and do another layer in between, which is your white. Does that make sense? So you're going to do, I would do the red first and then come back with the white stripes like that. And that's how you'd have to do it and see how this is very translucent. Make sense? So I'm putting, when are we put doing over the top of that now? Well, you're glazing it. Shall I just, shall I do one? I've got to dry this. You're going to have to dry that. Um, I'll tell you what, we'll show you, this. hang in at the end of the show, this will be dry and I'll show you, okay? By that time this so will be dry. You, got two, you, got, you have three stripes on there, you got a red, white, red. Yeah, red. Yeah, because it's the, yeah, red, white stripes, right? A flag. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just, yeah. Okay. So, all right. I mean, sure. Why say, not? Let's let's call it that. Let's let's say let's say that. All right. So there you go. Right. Something like that. Right. All and right. We'll there, see what those, happens. Those are so pair, stay tuned. That's going to be a cliffhanger. All right. So just stay tuned for that, uh, and then we'll we'll see what happens at the end. Now I think I said that I would do a um, ten minute painting. Do you have? Do you, did you want to start the giveaway on this, John? We we'll start the giveaway on that, and we want to use the other paints too. We want to continue using those. Oh, I want to finish using those. These. What? Uh, you're not going to use the other paints right now. You can open them all. I've got all these open. Okay. So we're not going to use those. Too bad. If they, you know, um, I don't want to quite. Um, uh, I don't want to quite do that. Right? Not quite yet. Uh, well, you still got a bunch of paint out there, so. Yeah, I've got a bu bunch of paint out. You see, I put quite a bit of paint out for this, right? So, um, uh, I don't want to do that quite yet. So let's uh, let's just find something that we can do pretty easily in a, in a kind of a short amount of time, right? Should we do that? Let's just yeah. do something pretty easy in a in a short amount of time. All right, you guys are with me on that, and I, and I appreciate you guys hanging in there with us. Well. There's, that's fun. You like it? <laughs> Why'd you take it apart? You have to glue that. You know, sometimes when stuff sits in water, the glue comes apart. So there we yeah, go. Yeah, it does. It just happens to anybody. So, all right. So, um, I think we said we had some white paint here and some purple. Okay. Got that color, and I want another color. What do we got? Some white paint here. All right, so can one we're... still get a certificate for the February challenge if they started in February, sent for a pack, and they have not had time to make the changes? Oh yeah, you still can. You can, it's it wasn't a February challenge. We just did it in February. 
Which where, one are we talking about? The, 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 the roses and the pink roses and the green oh, veins. Oh, that's you forever. Can, you can, that's forever. Just whenever that's you get around forever. to it. And if you're not up to that, if you, you know, one thing, if you paint it and you find it's hard, then that's not your skill level yet. That's okay. Yet. Then you know you're not there yet. Try some other paintings and come back to it. There's absolutely no time limit on this. No, that we one's should, there forever. We should put that up on the site, John. I Again. believe we'll, we'll make sure it's, it's clear if as it's not, mud. I want to make that clear because there really is no... Uh, there's really no time limit on any of this, right? Um, uh, there just isn't. No, there isn't. Um, All right, what have we got in here? All I right. hope we answered that question in regards to the membership. Yeah. Well, that yeah. made that clearer than we usually do. Yeah, I mean, I hope that we do. So, you really, we just, we try to, I, I, if, I, if you just, if, if funds are not an issue for you, and I, I think it's still under, uh, we started on the Senior Academy at, what? Uh, 30, 30, 34 95 a month, right? Which is less than a couple of tubes of paint, right? And then it comes with personal art coaching. And um, also you can send us um, one non-tutorial painting in a month. Uh, two, right? Yeah. Um, you know, which I think is kind of nice, right? All right, so we're just going to do some, some sort of something that's not um, Eiffel Towers or pointillism, right? Just uh, something like this. It doesn't this. look like pointillism. Looks like you've yeah. given up on it already. Yeah, we're not doing no, no pointillism <laughs> here, right? There's no point in it. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't resist. I just couldn't resist. Yeah, there's no point in it. Yeah, yes and yes. Yes and yes. So you want to, if you want to win this painting, matter of fact, why don't we give a, a membership away while you're doing Yeah, let's that. just, while somebody's entered, if you want to en enter this, win this painting, right? Yeah, we'll go ahead and give a membership away to the beginner acrylic artist. Oh, the painting, the February challenge was painting two paintings, one a year old and one new. So that was a challenge challenge. Yeah. So that was a Facebook challenge. Yeah, and you can just do that. We just wanted to see where you were. We just don't, you know. I mean, no, basically it was a test for yourself. Just, just a test you for yourself. Where, what have you done now? You know, you look at something you did before, do it again. Where are you, right? Yeah. You can still send those in for art coaching, but you basically... What you're trying to determine, right, yep. is, uh, you know, where you are. Is there a discount for a year's membership? There is yeah, on the mo Senior Academy, but not the Junior Academy. There's yeah. no yearly membership. That's mo strictly yeah, two, monthly. Yeah, two months free, really, almost. Yeah, basically it's two months free on the Senior, senior Academy. Yeah, it is. All right, let's yeah, do ourselves a drawing free. for... A membership to the beginneracrylicartist.com website. And I need to go to random.org. And we've got entries of 125 right now. And, uh... 126. Before I can type it in. Are coming in. 126. Get a secret number. Oh, there's a name I can't say. First name I can say, though. And that's all that counts. I won't say the name because it's so different from when I type it. All right, winner of a three-month membership Junior Academy is now. If this person is a member of the academy you will have an opportunity to select a downloadable lesson of your choice. There you go. 
winner, Patty Lucci. Lychich, Lychichi, Lychichi, Lych, Lych, Lych something. Got her. Pamela. Did I say Patty was Pamela? Yeah, Pamela. Okay. Pamela. Congratulations. Congratulations, Pamela. You, you. I'll try to remember to email you after the show. So you know what to do. Looking good, boss. It looks kind of like a. Uh, not, I'm not even sure what it looks like yet. It kind of looks like a, a a moon. You know, that's what we ought to have. Is a guessing game. What is it? Because <laughs> you got to some of them. You don't have a clue. No. No. I'm kind of thinking it's uh, it's an ocean water. Hey, if you haven't subscribed right now while we have a lull in the action, take a moment and press that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that little bell so you're notified when we do something out of the ordinary as not scheduled. I'm drying this real quick. Okay, go for it. Subscribe is right down there below. Press that subscribe button. Love to have you be a member of our little group here. We do live shows on Monday uh, when we're in town. And when we're out of town, we do live premieres on Monday, 7.30 Central, right here on YouTube. And she give it a good drawing. Okay, so so far we have an ocean scene, a supermoon, a seascape, seascape, supermoon, night seascape, a beach seascape. There you go. Could be anything, right? It could be anything. Absolutely, could be anything. Yes and yes. Carolyn, thank you for the reminder. Drawing people to subscribe. And we have two thumbs down. Unbelievable. Really? Well, you always have to have somebody. You just always wonder what's so wrong, what's so wrong in their day that <laughs> dissing us will make them feel better. They must but be hey, having but, a terrible hey, but day, right? Their day, you know. It's just you know, I mean, what's so gone, gone so wrong that they, you know, that would would count for something, yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's kind of sad too. Is that some of us having a terrible day? They feel like, um, you know, somehow doing that to us would um, make them feel better. Sort of mitigate something, circumstances. Well, you know, if it makes them feel better, it's all right. You know, I'm just. YouTube says that if you have activity, it's all they care about. They don't even look at the ups and downs. They just want to see ups and downs. You know, if we have 471 people showing right now, watching, why do we only have 214 ups and downs? Well, so, some people, yeah, and, and, and entries too. Of course, some people are on a phone. And I mean, I, I, you know, the thing is, I have found this to be true, and I bet you guys have found this to be true, too. Sometimes, phone when you pain. get a new phone, everything that ever worked <laughs> on the old phone, which you were perfectly comfortable doing, <laughs> I'm just saying, right, suddenly no longer works. Oh. Have you noticed that? It's not just me, is it? Yes. And, and then, and, no, it isn't, John. It's not, can't just be me. <laughs> it's just oh, you. Just, <laughs> Nobody you, else has a problem. It doesn't doesn't work. So then you're happily, you know, merrily um, trying to, you know, do your thing here. All right. So I'm watching it on the on the phone now. Okay, you're watching it on the phone. You want to give me a thumbs up? I want to give you a thumbs up. Can I do that? See, I mean, I'm just saying. Okay, there's the chat. Well, wait a minute. You got to get rid of the chat, I think, to get to that point. Well, that's good to know. I mean, see, how would you okay. know that? See, already, some little right, piece so of information. All right, so if I X the chat, mm. yeah, I can give it a thumbs up if I X the chat. Now we got four thumbs down. What is with people? Oh, 501 are watching. Oh, my, my little computer's not staying updated. So now okay. if I close the chat, how do I open it again? Just, I'm just saying that, you know, sometimes, and then people are watching on their TV, you can't, you know, I no, can can't. TV, I haven't figured out how to do anything on a television. Well, I'm just saying that there's a thing, right? And well, it's, that's a different operating system. So how do you get the chat back once you're on the phone? I give up. How do you get that? See, that's the question, right? Oh, wait a minute. Nope, that's not it. Is it all the way at the bottom? Nope. Is 
you know, I have, oh, there it is, live chat. It's, it's right there. This is simple. Uh, I guess see, I need he, to do a video. He says that, you guys. Doesn't he say that like, oh, it's so simple. No, John, it's not just Ginger with the new phone issue. Oh, it is too. <laughs> Quit taking her side. <laughs> Tap on the chat lock. Yeah, I found that little guy. I'm the problem is this isn't the right glasses for this distance. When you go live, it shows, it already gives a thumbs up. Well, mine does, because I, I, I give a thumbs up when I create the room. Because I know I'm going to enjoy the show. Do you? Absolutely. Well, you're such an optimist. What yeah. if you hated it? You just, well, <laughs> just... I can always change my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I can do take backs. <laughs> take, take backs? Yeah. Take backs? You didn't, you didn't I can do say take that backs. there was take backs, right? We didn't hear about... Oh, gosh, don't tell people there's take backs. Good Lord, John. Don't, <laughs> don't tell people there's take backs. This is, that's a revolting development, right? Oh. This is sort of fun, though. It's sort of fun making this up, right? I think it's just great. I'm just loving it so far. So, you know, I'm just sort of, um, you know. Has, uh, has anybody seen Pamela out there? Pamela who? The, the winner. Oh, of that, right? Of that. Okay, I give up. Has anybody seen Pamela? I don't think so. I was busy playing with the phone. I missed out. Okay, all right. I missed all the action. Oh, there it is. The people with thumbs down are sad people because they can't paint. Thank you, Angie. See? It's all in how you look at the world. Yeah. Is this coming from your head? Yeah, mostly. Now, what have you told us about that? Uh, have fun. <laughs> you better not send that in for personal art coaching. No, this is, this is, this is what I told you about that, right? <laughs> well, I actually have a photo I'm kind of referencing, but, you know, I mean, I'm making up the, yeah. the painting. I'm not totally... Well, here's another one from David. The thumbs down might be a thumbs up from those in Australia as we... Are upside down. That's down. right. See, again, thank you, Dave. That's, that's a very good point. Yeah, just it's hard to you know kind of keep track of all this stuff, isn't it? Uh, uh, I, I love stuff like this because you can. Um, my reference had the had the um, sun right there, but that's stacked. Stacked. So you're moving it. I'm moving it. Why would you do that? Because it was stacked tab in the middle of the it picture. It really was. It was stacked up in the middle of the picture. And I was just going off the reference, happily talking to you guys, right? Not paying any attention. But you can't, um, you know, you can't do that. No, no, you can't. So, you know, guess what? So we just, we're not doing that, right? Voyage Beyond 50, you're both awesome. My favorite couple. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. He's my, you know, John and I have so much fun together. It's just, it's sort of, you know, uh, we had to wait so long in our lives to, you know, find this, which, you know, at least I did. John had something going pretty good before, but, um, you know, I, I just feel really lucky to have found John or he found me or whatever because we, we share the same interests and we... Um, Sorry, we had to get rid of that one. Um, that one moon. That one that was, moon. So we were on a different planet. You could have left it. I could have, but I just oh, felt like man. I, I just, and the reason I didn't want to leave it was. Because it was dead center. Because it was dead center. So we're just going to, we're just going to suggest it, but not have it completely there. How's that? See, there could have been a new moon. They just discovered another moon. Yeah. See? It slipped behind the other moon. Yeah, it slipped behind the other. Well, it could have, right? You could have. And, and you, you don't know, but you know, we're we're, we're going to go with it didn't. How's that? All right. We're, we're going with it didn't. I'm just changing some colors here as we go. There we go. I just, think it's looking Marvy. Well, there's so many, you know, fun ways to paint stuff, and um, and this is one of the fun ways. How's that? <laughs> it sure is a lot quicker than your pointillism was. And you didn't even make the dots as small as you're supposed to either. No, no, I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. Hey, what's that darker red you're using? Uh, the magenta. I guess. That's the question. Yeah, the magenta. And then this color was um, purple and magenta. 
or I think a purple and ultramarine blue, I think maybe. Ginger little... could paint a glowing glob floating to shore. Well, speaking of that, we ought to show you that painting. You know, a couple of people have said they'd like to see more of these. Oh, this one? Or astral projection. We're, we've got some more planned. Yeah, we have a companion piece for this. Where'd it go to? You know, the boys are supposed to clean this place up. Well, you just keep saying that, right? No. You well, keep, I don't know you what... Keep, keep, keep well, you have that. Morgan and Sammy over there. They haven't done squat this week. Did I miss anything? No. What do you, how do you know? Did you, do you think you missed something? I, I always do. I think you might have missed something. I don't know. Well, now, here, now, here's a good one from Lisa. Mm -hmm. Since I found Ginger last year, I have no interest in any other YouTubers. This has been the best. The best mods and art friends. Thank you so much. I mean, John and I really appreciate that. You can't know. Well, maybe you do know, but in case you didn't know, we're telling you. Well, now you do know. Now you do know. We totally appreciate that. This is this is sort of fun, right? You just got the. I'm kind of liking. I'm I'm almost thinking we shouldn't give that one away. <laughs> so. Um, oh, the one we just did from last week is going to be going out probably tomorrow or the next day. Yeah, that's. Who are the boys? Oh, who are the boys? Well. Okay. We'll bring, we'll bring over two of them. We have quite a staff. Well, you should have uh, heard how uh, Becky referred to them. She had it perfect. Did she? Yeah. She described them perfectly. Sit there for okay. a second. This guy, that's Sammy. He is the, uh, he used to be the star of the show. Now he works behind the scenes. Okay. So and then okay. while we were up in Maine, Visiting Nicole, she uh, thought Morgan would like to have a new home in the South. So this is Morgan the Moose. John just loves Morgan. Oh, I love Morgan. Because he can sit right by the computer as a supervisor. Sammy's a little big for that. So those are two of the boys, and we have a, a whole other bunch of staff. When is the pace ball and Mick coming out? Next, well, this week. I was going to say next week, but next week, yeah. we're still working on next week, but it'll be this week. Yeah, this week, right? Yep. And let's see, we don't want this a straight line back here, so let's change this like that. Just give that a little bit of a... Something like that, like that. There you go, you've got this sort of uh, surrealistic... Um, I like it. Something with a little, the green glow, right? Did yeah. anybody ever tell you that there was this green, that, that, that the, the sun had this green glow around it? Did you guys ever hear that story? I, I remember being in California, and, and, and at, at sunset, they said if you watched it, you can see the green glow. I'm telling you what. It was like a snipe hunt. They had me looking for that forever, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, 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 you I don't know what to tell it. you, but I never saw a green glow around the sun, you know? Um, and maybe that, you know, just to have, had to have some drug, too. It just wasn't that, right? But Okay, question came up. On the Senior Academy, how do you find the Junior Academy? which I don't have a link yet, so my bad there. Recommendations for lessons order. We recommend you start with the back to basics and on the Junior Academy, under the Junior Academy Toots menu, you will see we have them broken down into search for a lesson, complete listing, animals, birds, fish, and back to basic listings. That's the one you'd want to start with. Yep. If you're new, that's where you want to start. Where's Chester? Chester's over there with Snarky. They're in the shipping department. Okay, so... Um, How are we doing? Almost Looking done good. here, you guys. I just felt like I needed to do something, right? What are you going to do? I'm going to put a lighthouse I right here. I knew it. Are you going to put that dead center now? No, it's off to the left. 
Uh, very little. No, here's center. There's the middle. Oh, okay. It's off to the left, like you said. Like I said. Yeah. Pay attention. I'm trying to. I'm trying to watch the news over here, though. Okay. It looks like a wolf head on the right. Oh, kind of does. Oh, it looks more like a bear head to me. Oh, yeah. Maybe we should just straighten No, 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 no. Oh, that was Bear Mountain. Sorry, Sammy. You had it for a second, buddy. Okay, so there's the... Well, now it looks like a dog with an ear flapping in the breeze. Um, okay. Peanut gallery. Thank you. <laughs> um, all right, so is this dry up here? Yeah, so let's see if this will work. We are constantly working on both websites, so we will try to fix that, Suzanne, in regards to making it easier. Yeah, and anytime you're having trouble, you know, somebody, if you write us and say, I'm, I'm having trouble, um, you know, seeing whatever, right? Um, this helps us, too. I mean, because we don't know what you're not seeing. You know, it's just like, for instance, when you ask a question, of, like tonight, you ask some painting questions, right? Yes, you did, right? And so that helps us. Let me dry this real quick, and I'll finish the lighthouse, and we'll talk about that. Give me a second, okay? Wait, I've got to find you. Okay, you're gone. There's Chester. Chester, he is our winter dog. He usually works in the uh, shipping department. He and Snarky work in the shipping department. He's our uh, go-to kind of guy. Anything we need done, he's our gopher. That's what he does. And she's back. Yeah, she's back. All right, Ginger's back. I just Sometimes if things aren't dry, you can't really, you know what I mean? You can't really do anything, right? No, you, and that's an important thing. You have to know when to dry. So I think that wouldn't be that dark. So let me just, I'm going to make that darker. Just I just didn't want it to be quite the same. All right, so there's this lighthouse right here that's... Um, Let's put something out a lot lighter around it. So, because he's just the lighthouse. Now that I'm looking at it, has to be lighter. So, if I put don't forget some we have light, the red stripes to still do the flag. I will. We'll do the red stripes. I just want to do this lighter here, right? Yeah. Around the lighthouse, and maybe this, th these hills back here. See, so just kind of lighten those up like that. Now, and I'm going to make the lighthouse all dark again because I can see right now that that wasn't the thing to do, is to make it lighter. We can't do the stripe because it's too far away. Okay. All right, there's our lighthouse. Now, what we're going to do here is um, we'll take some mixing white, this is zinc white, all right, and we're going to say that the lighthouse is That's a cool effect, isn't it? It's a very cool effect. How are you doing that? Just with zinc white. Showing the way for our sailors. So it's, yeah, it's, um, it's showing the way for the sailors coming up from this light here. Go ahead and get your entries in to win this marvelous painting. One well, of a just kind. Just create a one of a kind, just for you, right? Let's create a one From of a kind. From the creative just for mind you. of Miss Ginger Cook, right here, live before your very eyes. I'm just going to put the tower in like that because I want it a little bit darker. And um, all right, so I'm going to dry that, and put the white over it. Just give me a second here. Boy, got to know when to dry, people. Go ahead and get your entries in now before it's too late. You're going to be sorry if you missed out on this painting. Well, I mean, I don't know if you will or not, but I mean, if you want it, this is fun. I think I think this is um, a great example of, let's see, this is coming out. Jody thinks it's fine that my staff is not cleaning up the studio because they're so cute. Don't let that go to your head, guys. You're All not right. cute. You can clean up. Here. Wouldn't hurt. This is still wet right there. That's why it didn't dry. I thought you dry. dried it. I did, but it didn't dry. And if it doesn't dry, it doesn't, nothing happens. You just get purple, right? So I guess she's going to dry some more. You only need to enter one time. That's right. Thank you, Lynn. One entry. That's good to know. If something isn't working, you 
and test it and see if it's dry because this should work just fine. If it didn't work, follow right? that link there to do the entry. Secret word is to the point. I did that in respect for pointillism. There you we need go. To look up pointillism. There we go with our with our lights coming out under the water. Yes and yes. And here's our yellow, bright yellow in our lighthouse right here like that. Yes and yes. How fun is that? We'll put some more clouds back by our moon. Pointillism was using pure color. It used the science of the eye, smooshing things together, pointing by dots. It's a meticulous technique. No oh, kidding. Oh, yeah, it's a definitely a meticulous te <laughs> technique, right? And um, we Van should Gogh put some rocks in here, too, right? Where the water might be. Clear. So this was, the, this, was the, uh, this was our lighthouse right here. And, um, I like it. Let's put, uh, yeah, it's not too, not too bad, right? And no. So then here's the It's coming the together nicely. All right, there's the lighthouse, and um, I, I would say that that's, I think we're kind of finished with this here now. Maybe just a little bit of a, one more thing, and we're, we're good to go here. Um, as long as we have all the paint out, right? Hmm. All right, let's check our entries. How we are doing. Yes and yes. Get your entries in now for this one of a kind. Splashing paint now. That had just brought it to life. Right there. You can Did feel it? you can feel it now. Yeah, you can, right? Yeah. Alright, so there we go, you guys. That's um That's it. That's it. That's what, what we call it. Um Lighthouse at the end of the world. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, great. Lighthouse at the end of the world. There you go. Just put a little bit of water All right, we're going to be drawing for that momentarily once she brings up the, when she puts her paste much down on this one and yeah. grabs the red, white, and blue. Well, red and white. All right, so there we go. For instance, um, uh, that was fun, right? I hope you guys, oh, I, I think that was sort of fun, right? I think it was Just great. Something, something different to do. I mean, you're talking about... Um, Something off the top of your kidney. Yeah, right? Last chance, people. Here we go. Okay, cook like that. Oh, you're resisting. Uh, yeah. You're looking, but you resist it. <laughs> All right, let's go back to this. Remember I told you I'd show you how to do that. This was yeah, the glaze. Yeah, we're going to do the red stripes. So now what we're going to do is, um, what you're going to use the glazing medium so that's and the secret to get it to go transparent. Yeah, 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 the the transparent is that you're going to do, let's find a clean place to do that. Here, then we're going to do the glazing medium and red and see what you get here. To do the red stripe here, let's look, here's, here's a little bit of red glazing medium. Make sure, you don't want it too thick, you just, you can always dry it and do another coat. So you see how you can still see through it, but you've got the red. You can still see through it, right? Can you see that? See, the white there is giving it something to bounce against. Do it when you're done. Do it across the, the dark and you won't even see it. Or you see it next to nothing. So you, want, you don't want too much paint. The idea is it's mostly glazing medium with a tiny bit of color. It's just a dye. You know? So you see, you can see it, and then if you weren't sure about it, you could go over and uh, maybe do a second layer of, of the white, right? Uh, so here's the, the transparent white again. And, you know, you could do a second layer of that, and it'll show up, see? Yeah, something like that. Is that what you were thinking? Who asked that question? I don't know. I hope they hung out for it. They wanted to know how to do this against a back. I'm trying to remember back. They've got question. an eagle, and they wanted to suggest a flag behind it. And, uh, you know, doing the stripes. I think that stripes. would do it. 
So mm -hmm. I think, I mean, that's, that to me would do it. Um, All right, we're going to draw for the painting of the hour, the lighthouse at the end of the world. See, and part of me would that the flag was that, you know, I don't know what the eagle was, but I, I would, might be tempted to even do some, some star, spotty little stars back here, too, with the toothbrush. All right, so there's, that's how you would do that. Here's our, um, here's our finished painting of him, point, pointillism of the day. All right, which is right here. Here's our pointillism painting. Here's our finished uh, painting here. This is too dark here. Let's have... What's too dark? These clouds right here. The black ones? Yeah, they got... They just turned out darker than I thought. They got darker as they dried. Yeah, and they dried and got really dark. So we, you know what? We have solutions for that. Whoopsie. So we went too high. Stop it! There, they're gone. Okay. And let's put a little bit more. We can have some darker ones. We just need maybe magenta, something like that, right? Every painting needs magenta. Yeah, let's just put some of this color in here, too, because I think it's pretty. But The first winner was Pamela. All right. And she got, what did Pam win? Pamela won three-month membership in the Junior Academy. And we may just do another one of those because we have so many people hanging in there with us. Well, hey, thank, I'm glad you hung in there with us. I, you know, this was sort of a strange little painting. Part of me wants to throw in a seagull or two, you know what I mean? No, it's nighttime. They're in bed. Yeah, maybe so. <laughs> Satellite stars, I don't Can know. Can you pull the uh, water one down a little bit? Yes. Pull it down. I'll put it down here. So those are the two Perfect. kind of that we did tonight. There's our... That's um, what we did. Uh, and you're drawing for the one that's on your left. The, our viewer left. What? The water one. Never you mind. What? <laughs> this one? Pull it down? 188. Yes? What? This no, you're fine. Stop it. Okay. Leave it alone. <laughs> All right. I don't know what you're saying. All right, that's kind of a, that's sort of a fun thing, right? You know, your rocks, your... Um, uh, don't really like the shape of those rocks. I mean, Ginger could sit here and paint on her 10-minute painting for another hour, but let me just... But then, is it so it's called a 10-minute painting then? I don't know, I lied, hour? because I just don't like the shape here. See how it's a triangle? You can see how one might not like that shape. It used to be a bear, and it was a wolf. I mean, you've done everything to it. Okay, so I just changed the shape just a little bit, yeah? There we go, just... Winner of the painting. All right, who's won this painting, is... John? I can't say because it comes out. I don't know when it comes out. Who's won the painting? Gary Mitchell. Really? Gary, that is so cool. Gary Mitchell's the big winner. Gary, we're putting some water coming down here like that. Lynn saying too low when script is on. I don't know what that means. All right, see, I had a few little Patricia bits of water Lewis. coming oh, down. Oh, that was Patricia. Ginger, I asked about the flag. Thank you for your help. What did you say about the stars? Oh, what did you say about the stars? Well, I don't know. You know how I did the toothbrush here? I'm just saying it would be interesting maybe to, you know, do this toothbrush background here with some tiny little stars back here if you didn't do the whole flag. So you had your eagle here and some of so the flag. Well, yeah, I, you have to see the whole concept, but that I, might I be know. cool. Yeah, I see it's what you're saying a, now. Something you might be able to do, right? Yep. Congratulations, Gary. Please use one of the contact us on gingercooklive.gallery or beginner yeah. acrylic. I think I like this design enough, Gary, where maybe we'll do a, we'll, we'll revise this tutorial and do something with this. Make this a tutorial. I think it kind oh, of came it into out a real nice. lesson? Yeah, turn this into a real lesson, right? Because I kind of like how this came out. I hope you guys did too, right? Did I mention Gary lives in my condo? What? No. Judy says Gary lives in the same condo she does. Really? Well, that's what she said. You think she's going to lie to us in front of all these people? No, I just think it's sort of cool. Yeah. You know. Okay, you know what? We're going to do one more drawing. All right. That's done. We're going to do a drawing for another three-month membership in our beginner acrylic artist. We're 189 people. We have more people in her. By golly, we're going to go one more round. One more round, you guys. I hope you hung with it. I'm in there with us. If you think this, if you'd like to see this as a tutorial, let me know, and I'll design one for that too. And I hope you enjoyed while well, he's looking for the dry answer. I hope you guys enjoyed the pointillism. If you came in late, this was Surratt's original in 1889. And you can see it's just lots of little dots, yes and yes. He was bored. Lots of little dots. So, I mean, I think it's sort of cool. And um, so this was sort of the colorized 
2020 version of um, of this painting. A 2020 version. With lots of little dots. Yeah, Judy says we can just mail the painting to her and she'll take it from there. Okay. Thanks, Judy. Don't think so. Okay, winner of a three month. Now, if this person is a member of our academy already, again, you can have a downloadable instead. And you guys, while you're doing that, while he's doing that, don't forget. Oh, I meant to show this one. Somebody said it would have been neat to have some floating orbs. Can you back out for a second, John? I can do that, boss. Back it up. This was the painting we have in our academy. It's called Astral Projection, The Harvest. And it's just a futuristic painting. These are the kind of stars I meant, you know, with the flag, you know, you might want to do those. Uh, but anyway, Astral Projection, The uh, Harvest. And that, uh, people, uh, I've got to give a shout out to the two people that have done it. Nicole Nappy did a tremendous job. There was another one that came back, I think it was on Elise. So you guys have done, um, I was surprised how well these have come out when we've got them back. So they're terrific. This is a really fun lesson. In and the, wait till you see the companion piece. And the Senior Academy, we've got another piece to go with this later. Oh, and I meant to show the baseball piece while you're drawing. This was another lesson coming up in the Academy. You said we were doing this one. That's this week. Yeah, that's coming up. Because the coffee cup that's not up there was last week. Yeah, okay. Blame no these two. All right, we had some website problems. So anyway, those are those are two some really fabulous step-by-step -step tutorials coming up. Lots of lots of steps in learning how to paint something, and you know from beginner to advanced, and you'll get there. I promise you, you're going to get there. You can do it. So thanks do you want for to say watching. anything else tonight, boss? Hey, you no, just go ahead. Who's our winner? Which winner? You, the you, last winner. You didn't announce. Yeah, I did. It was Karen. Karen who? Karen Carnell Stevenson. Okay, so congratulations, Karen, for winning three months. That was the three months. Three months in the junior category. And Gary won the original painting. And won the original painting, and then and we Pamela had another won winner. The first three months. And, uh, three you got to keep up with me, lady. All right, so say good night, John. <laughs> good night, John. And thanks for joining <laughs> us, everybody. We'll be back next Monday for another live show from thanks. Houston, Texas. Bye. Bye, everybody. <laughs>